make sure that not just the upper echelon of black folk get to hook up this time around, but what Van is talking about actually trickles down to everyday black people so that we don't see classism intra-black America get worse over the next four years. Does that make sense? Okay. So I think that's um, a terrific question. But in order to answer it, I do have to go back to what several people said and try to build on it, but also perhaps redirect it. One of the panelists said earlier that there's an American agenda and then there's a black agenda. And I want to take issue with that. Because I think that the black agenda is an American agenda. And I think, however, that in order to articulate the black agenda in a way that other Americans can buy into it and support it, we have to reframe the notion of what it means to help black people. So this is not about handouts, and this is not about um, even affirmative action, which has been stigmatized in some ways because it is presented as oppositional to merit. This is about redefining merit itself, and redefining merit in a way that establishes that all of us have merit, that within each population, within, within each race and ethnic group, talent is equally distributed among all people. And therefore, if it turns out that disproportionate numbers of black people are spending their time in prison and not in college, that means we are not looking at the talent pool in the black community to the detriment of the white community. Because if we were elevating talent, then people would be coming of age who had innovative um, capacity to help fix America and do some of the things that Van and others are talking about. But when I'm talking about talent, I want to be clear, and this in many ways goes to your point, this is not about getting high scores on the SAT, and it's not about Barack Obama getting A pluses at Harvard Law School. Because you can get A pluses at Harvard Law School and still come out and not be a very good lawyer. This is not about conventional measures of merit. This is about understanding that the way in which we should reframe or redefine merit is that merit is something we find in groups of people, particularly diverse groups of problem solvers. So I want to recommend to you all a book by Scott Page, and it's called The Difference. Now, Scott Page is a professor of complex systems. This is a complex system. And what he is saying is that diversity of problem-solving groups trumps individual ability. Diversity in problem-solving groups trumps individual ability. So if you were going to look for a group of people to help solve the um, greenhouse gases, or you, you were trying to deal with exactly your question, Tavis, the goal would not be to find the smartest person in the room nor would it be to find the two smartest people in the room. Because the thing about smart people is that they often think alike, and then they get stuck at the same place over and over again. Mm -hmm. So what you really want is a group of diverse people who approach a problem from very different perspectives, working together collaboratively to solve the problem. And he talks about the fact that if you gave um, a group of people a test, and you could only hire two of them, and John got seven out of the <coughs> ten questions on your test right, and Stephen got six out of the ten questions on your test right, and Jane got five out of the ten questions on your test right, the normal American preference would be to hire Stephen and John, right? They got the two highest scores. And what Scott Page says in his book is that you should think about hiring Stephen and Jane. If it turns out that Jane, who only got five questions right, got all of the questions right that Stephen and John had gotten wrong. So that together, you have a team of people who can solve the problem, coming with diverse kinds of information. So this is about redefining what we're talking about. And I really want to um, give a shout out to Randall Robinson when he's talking about the importance of knowing and the importance of thinking critically. But our schools are not teaching people how to think critically even when they give them information. So, so to me, your question about how do we make sure that 
this is not about simply black faces in high places. This is not just about affirming people who are already doing pretty well. This is about shifting our resources to bring up the bottom so that the whole system can function more productively. And it's about identifying the raw talent that is going undiscovered in our community to benefit not only the black community, but the American community. So that's the first point. But there's a second point to this as well. And the second point is that in many ways, our suffering is a clue to the larger problem. So when we talk about the black community, you can't talk about the black community without talking about mass incarceration, and you can't talk about mass incarceration without talking about the war on drugs. In California, you have this three strikes and you're out law. That law is costing us not only the people who live in California in terms of having to pay for people to go to prison for um, in oftentimes trivial um, third strikes, it is costing the people of California because the money for the third strike is coming from education. Mm. So when you send somebody to prison for that third strike and you're sending them for a long time, you're basically denying 200 Californians a chance to go to community college. Since 1995, California has been spending more money constructing prisons than constructing buildings of higher education. So at the same time that we're talking about fixing America, we have to figure out that we've got to fix this idea that the way, that the place for black people, and for poor black people in particular, is the prison rather than the college. The way to do that then comes Back to my first point, we have to redefine merit. So we're not just giving people tests in order to identify their merit, because if you want to know what those tests really tell you, they tell you what kind of car your parents drive. If you look at the SAT, it is a wealth test. It is not a test of your talent. It is a test of how much money your parents have. The SAT correlates with parent income more strongly than it correlates with first year college grades. Now why aren't people talking about this? And so this is my last point. I would argue that we have moved into a new era of modern scientific racism. Ooh. Modern scientific racism. Now what does that mean? So if you think about the 19th century or the early part of the 20th century when they were measuring people's brains and they were measuring uh, uh, various circumferences of your head to see how smart you were and they were claiming this was all science, well, that was racism. Well, now, when they talk about tests and they talk about metrics and they talk about looking at empirics, that is a way of making racism invisible. And the reason that I'm calling it racism is because it is a state of mind that is indifferent to the fact that these tests, whatever you think about them, are having a disparate uh, impact on different populations and violating that first principle that talent is equally distributed among all groups. And therefore, if there are some groups that are not showing the um, measure of their true talents, and there's something wrong with the metric we are using, not with the group we are measuring. So the last point, Tavis, just to come back to your question. Many of us do well on tests. We have good strategic guessing ability. We're not intimidated when we have to function under speedy pressure. And those of us who can do that are the people who are getting ahead. And we should get ahead in this particular society because that's what's valued. But that doesn't mean we're the only people who should be getting ahead. There are people who have, if, if anybody has seen The Wire, you know there are really smart people in Baltimore who do not have a college degree and would not do well on the SAT, but their brilliance is going to waste because we are refusing to identify it in our preoccupation with empirical, one-size-fits-all measures of intelligence and merit. That's right. That's right. I want